the Honorable Chief Justice of Kerala High Court and Chancellor of the National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Justice Mani Kumar, the Honorable Minister for Higher Education and Pro-Chancellor of the National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Dr. R. Bindu, the Honorable Vi Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Dr. K. C. Sani, esteemed members of the Executive Council, General Council, and Academic Council of the University, the Registrar of the University, the Academician members of the teaching faculty and the non-teaching officers and employees of the university. Dist distinguished guests on and off the dais, especially the esteemed former judge of the Supreme Court, Dr. Radha Krishnan, and the other distinguished guests. The scholars, graduates, and postgraduates who have been conferred degrees, their guardians, parents, and relatives, my dear students, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to be here at the 16th convocation of the National University of Advanced Legal Sciences and to address you on this momentous occasion I thank the university authorities for giving me the opportunity to be in God's own country once again and to share my thoughts with those of you who will shape the future of our country. I am delighted because I see amidst law graduates and law students the future of the Indian judiciary. The convocation is an important milestone in the journey of life of the young, young graduates the, and the postgraduates who have been conferred their degrees. You have successfully completed your professional course and have stepped into a new phase in life, qualified to embark upon a career. For the institution, it is an event of immense relief, satisfaction, joy, and ecstasy in seeing the success of collective endeavor as students whose potential and faculties have been nurtured and developed by the institution move on successfully to the new phase of their lives. The performance of its students speaks volumes for the standard and quality of education imparted by an institution. The time has come to celebrate for the hard work that has led to this occasion. I congratulate you all, the graduates, the postgraduates, and the scholars who have just been conferred their degrees, their guardians, parents, relatives and well-wishers, the chancellor, the vice-chancellor, the teachers, and all others associated with the university. I especially congratulate and felicitate those of you who have walked away with medals and awards, those of you who have achieved flying colors, a special mention of the proud mother who was here to collect three gold medals on behalf of her daughter pursuing higher studies in Cambridge. Those who have missed the medals and not been able to score very high 
uh, marks should not be disappointed. You should make the endeavor. Let me tell you that the best lawyers in this country were not necessarily the best students of the university. In this context, I can't help but refer to the autobiography of William Douglas, known as in court years, the court years, where he refers to exchanges which took place between him and Frankfurter when there were lawyers who were not particularly successful, who were not arguing to the satisfaction of the judges, were found to be the toppers of top universities of the world. The young law graduates move on to the next phase of their lives with mixed feelings of joy of achievement and success, excitement of starting new innings in life, rosy dreams of the future, nervous anticipation, also the ordeal of uncertainty, apprehension, of inability to, expect, uh, to fulfill expectations of elders, peers, and others, which could sometimes also be unreasonable and preposterous. The young graduates also move on, perhaps with a certain amount of sadness at the thought of leaving the law school and separation from friends. The relationships you build up at the law school with fellow students, teachers, and others are lifelong. The memories of about half a decade in the law school will live with you forever. Years later, when you are at the pinnacle of your career, you will fondly reminisce about the good old law school days and this convocation. Until a few decades ago, the state of legal education in India was to, st was to say the least abysmal. In the compilation, Reflections on Legal and Judicial Education, Professor Dr. N. R. Madhav Menon quotes some of the scathing comments about legal education in India made in the report of the 14th Law Commission, headed by M. C. Setalva. The law courses were part-time courses which were not taken seriously and not of much value, except to render those attending the courses eligible to practice law. Those who excelled in law did so because of their own effort and merit, and not because of what they were taught at the law college. Thankfully, Professor Dr. Madhav Menon a distinguished son of this state, founder, vice chancellor of the National Law School, Bangalore, and the National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata, worthy recipient of the Padma Shri Award, posthumous recipient of the Padma Bhushan, was able to put legal education in this country at par with the highest international standards. Established in, 
as a university in 2005, National University of Advanced Legal Studies, referred to as New Earths, is one of the premier law institutions of our country, which offers a high standard of education. It is the first and the only national law university in the state of Kerala, subject to correction. Apart from well-equipped classrooms, New Isles has facilities for sports. There is a gymnasium with all necessary equipment, a very well-equipped library with over 1,300 books, and, of course, hostels for the students. Admissions to the New Isles, as we all know, are made on the basis of the highly competitive common law admission test taken by thousands of aspirants from all over the country. Securing admission in New Isles Kochi is in itself an achievement, and the education imparted is of a high standard. I haven't the slightest doubt that the students of this institution those of you who were conferred with degrees just now will do very well in life. To quote Albert Einstein, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. In law schools like New Al's, students are trained to think and to reason. You develop a questioning mind, the inquisitiveness to acquire knowledge, the ability to critically analyze facts and the law, and find solutions to problems and answers to questions. These are all attributes which lead to professional success as a legal practitioner. As students of New Isles, you have been participating in moot courts, debates, seminars, and symposia. Moot courts give you the feel of court proceedings and make you confident. You get acquainted with court etiquette. You know that you have to be thoroughly prepared. You learn to marshal facts, prepare briefs, study the law, including judicial precedents, and also to make submissions within the limited time given to you. In his book, Paradoxes of Legal Studies, Cardozo wrote, learning is necessary but paraphrasing is the springboard. Making short arguments within a limited time is the necessity of the day. You acquire the skill of time, time management and develop the practice of making short arguments to the point. This is absolutely necessary in an age of docket explosion and mounting arrears. You realize the importance of speed and learn to deal with the salient points raised by the opponent offhand without seeking time. With experience of moot courts, you do not get flustered by uncomfortable questions from the bench. You learn to tackle the questions confidently. The law school thereby prepares you for the legal profession. You have been fortunate to get the opportunity of good education in law in this premier institution. 
Please appreciate the contribution of your parents who might have sacrificed their own comforts and convenience and even cut down your essential expenses to give you such good education. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel, said Socrates. You may have completed a professional course of study, but the process of learning, which started long before you joined a law school, or for that matter, even before you joined a play school, will continue for the rest of your lives. You have to read. There is no end to reading. The more you read, the more you learn. Learning is lifelong. You also learn from experience. As said by Albert Einstein, education is what remains after one has forgotten what has learned at school. Casual reading and acquisition of inform information with a view to clear an examination is not real education. What is read for an examination is easily forgotten. A person can only be said to be truly educated when he or she develops a genuine love for learning, when he or she reads and learns out of interest and not with any specific intent. Good education builds up character, impacts behavior, and prepares you to deal with adversities in life with fortitude. The values we imbibe depend on the kind of education we get. In my view, education is incomplete and meaningless unless it is value-based. The promise that you had to make before you were given the degrees reflects the importance given by this institution to ethics and values. You were made to promise that you will faithfully and carefully fulfill the duties of the profession for which you have qualified yourselves, and that you will, on all occasions, maintain its purity and reputation, and that you will never deviate from the straight path of its honorable exercise by making your knowledge subservient to unworthy ends. This is something you should always keep in mind. Helen Keller had said, the highest result of education is tolerance. To quote Robert Frost, education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or self-confidence. The law school has induced these qualities in you through instructions, through example, and through the regimentation of regular moot courts and other exercises, where your stamina, equilibrium, patience, and tolerance level have been put to test. You will realize the importance of these qualities more than ever once you join the legal profession as a lawyer or if you become a judge. And I sincerely hope that many of you will. Felix Frankfurter had said, in the last analysis, the law is what the lawyers are. And the law and the lawyers are what the law schools make them. Newells has made you what you are today. Try to give some part 
of what you have got from this public law school by using your knowledge and skill for the benefit of society. We live in a society governed by the rule of law. Use your knowledge to uphold the rule of law and eliminate oppression. Contribute in whatever way you can to enhance access to justice. Spread legal awareness and sensitize people. Give legal advice and assistance to those in need of advice and assistance, even if you have to do it pro bono. As aptly said by Wendell Wilkie, the American lawyer and Republican nominee for president in 1940, education is the mother of leadership. The well-educated become good leaders. To quote Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Those of you who are graduating to the next phase of your life are sufficiently empowered to bring about a change. Wherever you are, whatever be your vocation, whether you choose to take up a corporate job or a government job, whether you become a judge or a professional lawyer or an academician, you can make the difference. You can contribute to the development of the country, protection of human rights, elimination of injustice, upliftment of the underprivileged, the welfare of the marginalized, and the differently abled. The examples were only illustrative. You can become instruments of social change. With will and determination, you can collectively make this world a better place for many. Today, there are wide options for law graduates, especially the ones from the better law schools. The NUALS offers job opportunities through campus recruitment. Many of you may opt for well-paid corporate jobs. Some of you may even have got offers for corporate jobs or jobs in reputed law firms. Some of you may take the civil services examination and join the bureaucracy. I am, however, confident that a good number of you will practice law and also become judges. And I was happy to be told at least by one of the gold, winner, gold medal winners that he would like to become a judge. One of the scholars awarded the PhD degree today is a judge from Tamil Nadu. So we have good examples before us. The legal profession may be fraught with uncertainties, but with dedication, discipline, and hard work, you are bound to succeed. You should have ambition, but at the same time not be over-ambitious. It is often said that law is a jealous mistress. To succeed as a lawyer and reach the top, you have to give all your time to the profession. There are no fixed working hours. There is no alternative to hard work. To be able to give all your time to the profession, you must learn to love the profession, 
be committed and dedicated to the profession, you must be able to give up other pursuits happily if you need to. When you get a brief, be fully prepared. Read the brief carefully in detail from the back sheet till the end and find out the answer to every possible question that could arise. Make a list of dates with corresponding page numbers and have your written notes of arguments ready so that you do, do not miss out anything in court. Look up the law, be ready with precedence, cite those judgments which are relevant and to the point. Be punctual in court, properly groomed and courteous. And once again I put emphasis on the lines from Paradoxes of Legal Service written by Cardozo. Learning is necessary, but paraphrasing is the springboard. This applies to the legal profession. This also applies to judging. Paraphrasing the salient points. Be respectful to the court, but you need not be subservient to the court. You must, however, always remember you are an officer of the court, even though you may have a duty to your client. Do not mislead the court. Have a professional approach. Be honest. Never lie before court. Because by taking recourse to unfair practices, you earn a bad reputation very soon and that can be harmful to the profession in the to your professional career in the long run the legal profession is not a bed of roses in the initial stages work may be hard to get and slow to pick up there may be days when you when you may have no work Use your time to study. Do not get deterred or frustrated. Take adverse situations in your stride and continue. In his book, Neither Roses Nor Thorns, Justice H.R. Khanna, who had been enrolled in 1934, wrote that his first five years were days of hard work. But till a particular month in 1939, there was not a single month when he earned in three figures. Th those of us who have read the series written by Lord Denning find that even Lord Denning had to pretend to be busy working out on old worked out briefs to impress solicitors when he had no work. Here I would remind you, remind you of the words of wisdom of Winston Churchill. He said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue which counts. We all know that the judiciary is a very important pillar in the Indian political setup. We have adopted the principle of separation of powers for a healthy democracy it is imperative that we have a strong robust judiciary 
I am sure some of you will join judicial service and become judges. At the entry level, you will perhaps be a junior civil judge or subdivision of judicial magistrate and then work your way up to become a high court judge or even a supreme court judge. You can practice for about seven years and take the competitive test for direct recruitment of additional district judge, district judge. If you build up a good practice in the high court, you may directly be appointed judge of the high court. Direct appointment as judge of the Supreme Court is also possible. However, very few judges have so far been appointed to the Supreme Court directly. I appeal to you to apply for the judicial service in large numbers. I repeat that the judiciary is an important pillar of the Indian democracy. A strong judiciary is absolutely imperative for a healthy democracy. We in India have an idealistic, people-centric uh, constitution. The objects and ideals of the constitution are summarized in its preamble. The people of India resolved to constitute India into a sovereign democratic republic. Today, it is sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. The Constitution promises to secure to all its citizens justice political, social, and economic. Liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship. Equality of status and of opportunity. And to promote amongst all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. The citizens are conferred with fundamental and other constitutional rights. We should also remember the fundamental duties which have been incorporated into the Constitution by amendment though they may not be specifically enforceable, they may be used to interpret other laws, service rules, and the like. Some of the fundamental rights are available to citizens, others are available to non-citizens. How well the Constitution works would depend on the people responsible for its operation. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, referred to as the father of the Indian Constitution, had remarked, however good a constitution may be, if the people implementing it are not good, it will be proof, it will prove to be bad. However bad a constitution may be, if those implementing it are good, it will prove to be good. The judiciary is referred to as the guardian of the Constitution. When rights are infringed, whether constitutional, statutory, contractual, or equitable, and justice is denied, the judiciary steps in to adjudicate and grant relief. To secure rights and uphold constitutional values and principles, it is imperative that we have a strong, robust judiciary that imbibes constitutionalism and zealously upholds constitutional values. All judges 
whether of the Supreme Court or District Court, interpret the law and adjudicate. The differences in the jurisdiction that is exercised and the position in the judicial hierarchy. The basic attributes of any judge are absolute independence, integrity beyond any iota of doubt, unflinching impartiality, intelligence, erudition, dedication, and the inclination and capacity to do hard work. It may seem that the life of a judge is very easy, but just as the legal profession is a full-time profession, being a judge, judgeship, is also a full-time occupation. Much contrary to what people believe, the real work of a judge starts after court hours. There are orders to sign, there are judgments to dictate and prepare, and today the judges also have a lot of administrative duties and functions. Unlike lawyers, even the junior most judges have financial security. However, the life of a judge is a life of sacrifice, and you should be prepared to willingly make this sacrifice to give to the society back something of what you have got from this society. You have to be prepared not to mingle freely with lawyers who appear in your court regularly or clients who may have cases in your court or even courts of your colleagues. This is because of the well-established principle that justice should not only be done, it should manifestly be seen to have been done. If you are found mingling too much with lawyers who regularly appear in your court or with litigants who may have cases in the court, though not in your own court, if you take favors from people, this may give the impression that the judge is not strictly partial. When a discretionary order very genuinely goes against or in favor of a party, many questions are asked, doubts are raised. Join the judiciary in public interest, render expeditious justice. Today we have docket explosion, we have mounting areas, contribute to the system. After much sermonizing, sanctimonious sum sermonizing, I would say, I would end with good wishes as expressed in the beautiful, timeless lyrics from Forever Young by Bob Dylan. God, may God bless you and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung. And may you stay forever, up, uh, forever young. May you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the lights surrounding you. May you always be courageous, 
stand upright and be strong. And may you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. And may you stay forever young. Thank you very much.